What's up, sons? It's Blind Riding with Son of a Tech, and we're going to kind of wing it. I didn't write a script, so let me know if you guys like scripts more or non-scripted more. We'll see. Anyways, today we have the RX 470 versus the GTX 1060. The 1060 is going to be the 3 gigabyte version and the 470 is going to be the 4 gigabyte version. And the game we're going to be taking a look at is going to be Forza Horizon 3, which is going to be a universal Windows platform game and it's going to be in DirectX 12. Another thing that makes this special is the dynamic settings that Forza has built into it. We did see this in the Forza Apex beta and I had a feeling it was going to show up in the new horizon game for windows 10 and it has awesome another thing to note is that if you buy the digital copy for your xbox one or for your pc you can play it on either one and have consistent saves across the board it's pretty sweet i definitely recommend buying the digital version mainly because of that feature if you buy the hard disk copy for the xbox one right now and you plop it in you don't have that option to get it for the PC later and you're gonna want it on PC because these numbers are impressive so like I mentioned there is a dynamic settings option that you can select and what that's going to do is something similar to what was going on behind the scenes with Halo 5 where the engine would downgrade the graphics various different graphics settings to improve frame rate and keep it at the 60 FPS in the case of Halo 5. Now that might be different depending on how you set up the settings in the game because you can lock it to 30, 60 or unlock. Now while unlock sounds good if you're using the dynamic settings, I have found that you want to lock at 60 because if it's just unlocked, I guess the engine doesn't know exactly what the target is. And I've noticed that that will make it drop below 60 more often in all settings, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Now the other option is going to be just setting up the settings like you normally would in any other PC game. You can select the different options from multi-sample anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, and texture detail as well as shadow detail which shadows are pretty in this game so let's start with if we set everything at 1080p ultra preset and the way we went ahead and tested for this is i have an application called present mon this was written by a guy from intel and is on github and i also have a video on this channel that i'll link in the description below on rules or i guess instructions how to use it so we would run present mon start capping and then when we were done we it would spit out an excel file and i'll show you guys the excel file here and under the k column we have presence between and that number any of those numbers you can take and divide a thousand by it and it'll give you a frame rate what we wanted to do was get the min max and average so to do this the average we just did an average command in excel so we averaged out all the numbers in the K column. For min we use, and max, we use percentile. So the way that works is we selected the percentile. And so then for min and max, we put the one percentile and the 99th percentile. Well, that would be first percentile and 99th percentile into the formula that you see there. And of course, that number then we divided, we used to divide. A thousand. So that's how we got all the numbers, and I hope that's cool by y'all. It took a lot of work, and that's because Forza doesn't have a built in benchmark. So there you go. So in 1080p with the ultra preset with MSAA, that's multi sample anti aliasing times four, which is a pretty big performance hit, we got you're going to notice a trend here, but the RX 470 got a min of 37.79 frames per second, an average of 4. 
49.7 frames per second and a max of 75.33 frames per second. The GTX 1063 gigabyte didn't really do that well. Um, the multi-sample anti-aliasing really gives it a hard time and the min for the GTX 1063 gigabyte is 14.8 frames per second, an average of 44.53 frames per second, and a max of 64.5 frames per second. So that's 1080p, that's all good and well, that's ultra preset. What? about if we turn on the dynamic preset. This is where it gets a little interesting because the dynamic preset is medium settings, but we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes and what is changing as we play. As far as I can tell, while I'm playing, I do notice mainly changes in resolutions and texture qualities. That's what I'm able to kind of pick up. I can't find a way to monitor this yet. And if you guys know a way to monitor what settings are being turned on and off, I would love to get that from y'all. But that aside, with dynamic medium settings at 1080p, the R RX 470 got 33.95 frames per second at its minimum. The average was 74.06 and the max was 107.26. Pretty impressive numbers here and it shows you that that dynamic medium setting is really helping improve uh, your frame rates and even keep them more consistent. Unfortunately the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte had a pretty bad minimum again with 15 0.54 frames per second, but the average is definitely bumped up at 54.41 frames per second and a max of 84.04 frames per second. Pretty cool. So let's talk about 4K. What can dynamic medium settings do for 4K or dynamic settings in general? Well, first let's talk about the 4K Ultra preset with no multi sample anti aliasing because if we did that, we would probably just crash. I'm not going to lie. Neither one of these cards can handle that. So on minimum with the RX 470, we got 24.71 frames per second. Its average was 31.3 frames per second and its max was 44.24 frames per second. And the GTX 1060 took a shit. The minimum was 7.46 frames per second. The average is 29.05 frames per second. And the max was 65.9 frames per second. Something interesting to note is that while the average on the RX 470 is better than the 1060, um, there is a higher max from the GTX 1063 gigabyte. And that actually isn't necessarily a good thing because the spread between the min and the max on the GTX 1063 gigabyte makes the frame rate not playable at all. And even if that average was bumped up a little bit, that difference between the min and max would be too much to make it playable. The tighter numbers for the RX 470 make the game even, at, even with only 30 FPS and some drops down into the 20s playable or tolerable. I would say. I personally would turn some settings around and we're going to talk about those right now. If you turn on the 4K dynamic medium settings, once again, I kind of am kicking myself and wish I would have done the dynamic ultra, uh, but the reason I was doing dynamic medium, I want to clarify, is because the dynamic medium settings were what was recommended in 1080p for both of these cards. So in 4K dynamic medium settings, which is recommended, the dynamic settings are recommended, the resolution's not. The RX 470 had a minimum of 23.5 frames per second with an average gaining 10 FPS over the ultra preset with 43.53 frames per second and a max of 81.77 frames per second. The thing to note here is that that average pushes us into that 4K free sync range since there aren't really any 4K panels that have wider ranges than 40 to 60 hertz. This is 
is notable because if you turn on FreeSync at 4K and you're able to maintain 40 FPS or more with an AMD card, you're having not just a playable experience, but an enjoyable playable experience. And I can attest to this as with the RX 470 for about two hours, I played in 4K and it was fantastic. I didn't have very many issues at all. I didn't even notice the drop to 23.5 frames per second, but that is there and you might notice it. Your mileage might vary with that, but it was definitely very playable for me. Unfortunately, this is not the same story for the GTX 1063 gigabyte, whose minimum was an abysmal 9.62 frames per second with an average of 36.73 and a max of 72.31. So it's still an improvement. The dynamic settings are still well the dynamic settings are still an improvement over non-dynamic settings for nvidia and amd alike it does seem to favor the amd card for whatever reason <coughs> xbox hardware is amd so that's what we got could be async compute we're gonna have to do some more testing anyways in conclusion guys i think that it's pretty obvious from the numbers here that if you want to play forza horizon 3 for 200 dollars on your graphics card you're going to want to pick up the rx 470 instead of the gtx 1063 gigabyte now the mileage may vary across other different games and if there's one in particular you'd like me to throw them head to head in let me know thanks for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe down below and I'll see you next Tuesday.